Hey guys, it's Mr. Edick. Um, you guys are probably wondering what we're going to do today. Today, I'll begin reading our story, Peter Nimble. We're in chapter 20. I'll try reading a chapter a day. I'll ask you questions throughout. You can kind of think of them to yourself. I'm not going to have you write them. If you want to leave the answers in the comment section on YouTube, you're more than welcome to. It is not mandated. I just want you to think about it. If your parents can sit around with you, you can actually um, give them the answers to the questions. I'll give you a couple, uh, 10 seconds or so in between when I ask a question throughout it, like we do with Kahoot. Um, if you guys want to, you can leave a comment. I can actually post the questions um, in the description of it. Each day, we're going to do Peter Nimble. I'll try doing some reading for our ELA portion with the activity books and then I'll do a lesson on math. Um, I'm going to date um, each of the video videos so you might have three separate videos. One's going to be for Peter Nimble, one's going to be for ELA which will do the activity books which I'll wait until you all get copies of them and the other one is going to be for math. Um, the math I'm not going to do two different ones. We'll probably work with what we've been doing which is multiplication division. Some of it will be really easy for some of you. The others, it might be more difficult, but I'm going to go through. I'm going to have a whiteboard at the house or at school, depending on where I am. I'll write in all the answers. I'll make sure. I'll ask you the questions. And then I'm going to go over the entire worksheet so you guys will be able to figure out um, the answers to them. So I'll do it just like we're in class. Um, as far as the comments, please don't post anything inappropriate. You guys know the rules. I'll just delete the comments anyway, but I'm making it public so it's easier for you guys to find each of the videos, and then it'll be easier for you to answer the questions and follow along. Um, it's a We all know it's a lot of things going on right now in the world of this coronavirus, so we'll just try making it as fun as we can. I'm going to try giving you some links for phys ed classes as well. Um, I'm going to see if I can attach those through Facebook. I know that some of the gyms that we um, have out in my area, they're actually doing virtual phys ed classes and workouts, so I'll let you guys know about those as well. Not mandatory by any means, but those are other options. So I'm going to start reading Chapter 20, The King's Address. Peter and Peg made it to the eating hall just before the second course. The princess led him to a secret perch inside the mouth of one of the many stone gargoyles spitting water down into the courtyard. Gargoyles, as you may be aware, are so named because of the way they gargle water. It is thought by some that these immortal grotesques were once filthy little children and turned to stone as punishment for the nasty habit of spitting in public. This pair of filthy children, however, had bigger things to worry about than social taboos. Peter and Peg leaned over the bottom row of stone teeth, eavesdropping on the citizens below. As with supper the previous night, conversation were pleasant and the food was abundant. Peter could hear people talking through stuffed mouths, saying things like, I do have a good big bisque, and my, isn't this sparrow omelet divine? Sparrow omelet? Does anyone know what a sparrow is? Right? It's one of the birds. They're making an omelet. That does not sound very good. The hall had been completely clean to, since the boy was last there and the sparrow's pedestals had been replaced with potted trees. So remember, all the birds had flown away when Peter saved them. Now it's just a potted tree, no more sparrows. A group of children comes through here before dawn to clean up, the princess said. The grown-ups always leave the place in a terrible... Peter raised a finger to her lip, signaling for her to be silent. He needed to concentrate on what was happening below. He could hear people chewing... He could hear the clock tower ticking. He could hear the streams flowing around the perimeter. Princess, do you see something in the water down there? Peg peered over the jaw of the gargoyle for a better view. Everything seemed normal to, normal to her. What am I looking for, she asked. Peter concentrated. There was definitely something foul in that water. Is there something sticking out of the surface? Like long tubes of some kind? I see some reeds. They're spread all over the hall, every ten feet or so. Peter nodded, inching closer to her. It's a good thing we came. I'll wager my knack that the king is planning to attend breakfast this morning. That's ridiculous, Peg said. The king never eats breakfast with his subjects. What makes you so sure? 
So now the king never comes down to eat with all the adults because his guards are stationed in the water. Look where the reeds are. Do you see any large shadows? Yeah, she said after a moment. Uh, uh, are those monsters? There's nothing quite like the smell of wet ape. The boy tried not to sound smug, but he had difficulty controlling his grin. Stay down. Here comes the king. As if on cue, a trumpet sounded, and two dozen armed apes rose from the water. Seeing the dread night patrol in a broad daylight, the people panicked. Several men fainted right there on the spot. Others began choking on their waffles. There was a mad stampede as citizens threw their food down and shoved and pushed to escape the eating hall. But when they reached the corridor, the people found that a gate had been lowered, blocking them off from the rest of the palace. So now they're all stuck and trapped in there. Stop, citizens, an ape roared above the den. Peter recognized its voice as the one named Longclaw. The beast paused, checking to make sure everyone was listening before he continued. Your gracious king has decided to join you for breakfast. Welcome him. The crowd instantly erupted into riotous applause, the likes of which Peter had never heard in his life. So what are they doing once the king comes in? The ape made a huge, um, uh, let's see, decided, and he made sure that everyone was listening. So what's he asking everyone to do? Give him a big applause. He listened as the men and women stomped and whooped and cheered with all their might. The master thief, however, could sense other things. Remember, Peter Nimble is blind, but he's stronger with all of his other senses. That their clapping hands smelled sweaty and their cheering throats sounded dry. The king entered from a small door at the base of the clock tower. Peter could not see him, of course, but he could hear well enough. Every step echoed with a fierce clank of spurs. He's wearing his clockwork armor, Peg said. He never goes anywhere without it. Peter was at a loss. He was pretty sure she must have meant something other than clockwork. But when he listened more closely, his ears caught the faint whir of gear spinning beneath the king's breastplate. The boy sounded the sounds, wondering how this strange armor might work. The applause continued as his highness stepped to the head of the banquet table. Instead of waving his hand for silence, he simply stood there nodding. What's he waiting for, Peter whispered to Peg. He's waiting to see who stops first, she said. But no one stopped. The people cheered and cheered and cheered until their hands were red and their voices hoarse. Finally, an old man at the table lost his strength. He collapsed to the ground, his cries giving way to a fit of coughing. Enough, the king called out in a voice both authoritative and indignant. Peter did not think it sounded like the voice of a fierce warrior. There was something almost shrill in his voice. Yet as a command, the crowd fell to instant, terrified silence. If it's terrified silence, is it just normal silence? No, they are what? Scared. The king faced the old man. Have you no respect for your great ruler? P -p -p Please, mighty king, the old man begged. Have mercy on a loyal subject. Guards! Fast as a flash, three apes leaped into the courtyard. They pounced on the old man and dragged him by the heels, screaming down the corridor towards some unseen and no doubt unpleasant fate. When at last his cries had faded away, the king turned back to his subjects. Please eat, he said with a magnanimous smile. So that guy, old, they all of a sudden just say, you got no respect for him? And they grabbed him. The last, the first one to give up on cheering and clapping. Every person in the hall sat down. They ate in silence, trying to force down perfect mouthfuls of food. This was hard to do on account of having just seen one of their neighbors disappear at the hands of two drooling apes. High above them, Peter huddled with Peg inside the gargoyle's massive jaw, shivering. He was shivering not because of the cold water rushing past his knees, but because his sensitive ears could still detect the old man's screams echoing somewhere deep underground. Meanwhile, the adults below chewed, sipped, and swallowed their way through the rest of their meal. Apes circled the perimeter behind them, keeping watch for anyone who might dare to offend their king with a slackened appetite. When the people had finally cleared their plates, 
And Cardine spoke again. Remember, that's the king. My dear citizens, you may be wondering why I have graced you with the presence this morning. You see, it has been just over ten years since I completed building this perfect palace. Brick by brick with my own hands. He paused for a moment to accept his subject's enthusiastic applause. So every time he says things, he expects people to applaud. Thank you, citizens, the king said. It is so heartwarming to see how you appreciate my leadership, wisdom, and sacrifice. We do, we do, the people shouted. And to reward you, I am planning something very big for our kingdom's anniversary. All hail anniversary, the people shouted. It will be something that will make my kingdom what it should have been all along. Not only perfect, but powerful. Remember, he was not the nice king. His brother was. Hooray for powerful, the people shouted. Peter leaned forward. Whatever the king was planning, it might have something to do with the digging being done underground. So they get, remember, they're all down there. We're not sure what the plan is, but they're like making a giant weapon all underground. But before I share that with you, I have something of a more serious nature to discuss. Three cheers for serious nature, the people shouted. The king scowled at this last declaration. If I didn't know better... I'd say you were all repeating whatever comes from my perfect mouth. Oh no, the people shouted more nervous this time. We're listening. We love you. That's better, he snapped, somewhat mollified. As I said before, there is a grave matter that I must bring to your attention. It seems that a spy has wormed his way into the castle. He is going by the name of... Does anyone remember what he told his name was? It was the funny name, Mr. Justice Trousers. And I suspect that he may, in fact, be a thief. At this, women became hyperventilating, while men trembled in their boots. It seemed the mere word had struck terror into the hearts of every subject. As you know, the king said, Thieves are dark creatures who have evil ways of opening the locks that I've installed to protect you. So, do they like the thieves in this palace? No. The two children listened as the people praised the king and his wonderful magic locks. Peter, who had told a lie or two in his day, was not impressed. He's, telling to, he's trying to tell them being locked up is good? That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. I know, she said. But they believe him all the same. The king raised his hand, silence in the crowd. I have been told that this Mr. Trousers has come on a secret mission to assassinate your worthy king. A fresh wave of panic rippled through the crowd. Don't die, your highness, they cried. We need you. Your concern touches me. He placed a gauntlet over his ticking heart. However, do not forget that I am the greatest fighter who has ever lived. Peter snorted at this last statement. <laughs> so does Peter believe him? No. Don't laugh, Peg warned him. He may be vain, but my uncle is dangerous. Simon says he can wield not one, but one hundred swords. And a single sweep of his arm can fall ten men. Her mind flashed to the memory of her dead parents. So remember, they are dead. We have realized that. Whatever you do, don't underestimate him. So is he a great fighter by what Peg's saying? Yeah. That this man could prove so powerful seemed impossible to Peter, but he trusted Simon to know a good warrior when he met one. Peter had spent his whole life in a town where fights were either drunken and friendly or silent and petty. True war was foreign to him. He thought of how scared and confused he had been when the battle broke out in the nest. He was in a different world now. The boy shook these thoughts from his head and concentrated once more on the king's address. Loyal subjects, you may be asking yourselves how a spy managed to hide in our midst. I am saddened to inform you that he was smuggled in by one of your own. I present to you all the traitor. He banged his armored hands together and two apes stomped in from the corridor, escorting someone between them. Peter gasped. He could smell the perfume from all the way up here. It's Mrs. Molasses, he whispered. 
Peg leaned in close. Is that the lady that, hel lady that helped you? Mrs. Molasses wore shackles around her wrist and ankles. It was clear the woman had no idea what she had missed in the first part of the king's address. She kept pleading, What have I done? What have I done? The princess watched as the apes marched their prisoner to the middle of the hall and hurled her at the king's feet. And Carnine resumed his address to the crowd. Early this morning, my guards apprehended. Does anyone know what apprehended mean? It means they took her. This woman in her home, she was a fine citizen, an earnest admirer of her king and her kingdom. Blessed with a perfect life, she was eager to share her good fortune with strangers. Because nice things were being said about her, Mrs. Molasses began nodding her head vigorously, affirming each word. He continued, And it is because of this generosity that I have called her before you today. The woman gave a brief, bewildered smile. Was she being rewarded? So this lady's actually smiling now. I have received word that she had recently brought a friend to supper, a stranger who she had been housing for many days. So Peter's been there a long time. My dear Mrs. Molasses, he said, smiling at her, would you be so kind as to tell us the name of your esteemed guest? The woman beamed over, now certain she had been nominated from some sort of hospitality prize. Uh, your Highness, his name was Justice Trousers. At these words, the crowds gave a communal shriek. Guilty by her own admission, the king proclaimed. Citizens, you know that this to be the very name of the spy who sent to murder me, and this woman is his accomplice? Mrs. Molasses gave a faint squeak. No, your highness, Mr. Trousers was a nice man. He was injured. I wanted to help him to share a perfect palace with him. She approached on her knees, clutching her manacled hands to her bosom. He never said anything about being a spy. Of course he didn't say, you fool. And you didn't think to ask? Your kindness, and he spat out the last word with a particular disgust, has released an enemy into your midst and put my precious life in danger. He turned back to the people. Now what shall we do to her? Punish her, the people shouted. Very well. He marched to the long wooden table and snatched up a fistful of cutlery, or those are like silverware, raising it above his head. Prove your loyalty to me. Take up your arms and punish the traitor. Princess Peg watched, horrified. They wouldn't! She whispered. But she was wrong. Without a moment's hesitation. Oh boy, guys. Every person in the eating hall took up a knife, fork, or serving spoon chanting, kill the traitor. Kill the traitor. Mrs. Molasses shook and fright they encircled her, screaming and shouting. The apes chuckled, eager to enjoy the show. Kill the traitor, long live the king! We have to do something, Peg said, reaching for Peter's hand. But his hand was nowhere to be found. While she had been busy watching the crowd below, the master thief had disappeared. Wow, what a chapter. That's pretty intense, guys.